Virgin Galactic's tourism spaceship reached the boundary of space today for the very first time. The manned test flight puts the company on the verge of commercial flights into outer space. Johanna Wagstaff has more in this history test flight for us tonight. Johanna, take us through this groundbreaking flight today. So, Carol, this was the fourth powered test of Virgin Galactic spacecraft. It didn't actually start on the ground. The spacecraft is carried up uh, from the ground via another spacecraft. And then from there, it's launched, its rockets are fired, and it heads up even farther. I've got some video to show you sort of what that would look like. So this plane that's attached to uh, the spacecraft, you can see uh, the spacecraft is actually underneath the plane, takes it up to a height of about 15,000 meters. Once it gets to that designated height, it detaches, ignites its rocket engine, and continues climbing. And it climbed today to a height of 82 kilometers. That's an important height uh, above California's Mojave Desert because that's where the company considers the boundary of space, 80 kilometers. That's also the boundary that the U.S. Air Force has decided is space and other U.S. agencies. But some scientists say that that boundary is more like 100 meters. All that being said, Galactic went up to 82 uh, kilometers today and uh, that was certainly an achievement. Uh, once it got up to that height, it coasted over the climb, uh, fired up its unique tail feathering device, and uh, slowly descended back down to a runway a couple kilometers away. But it was a big day. Take a listen to uh, founder uh, Richard Branson. Well, we've been to space, and uh, that's something that we've been uh, looking forward to for 14 years since we started Virgin Galactic. Um, it's a historic day. I think it's the first commercial spaceship company to actually put people into space. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we're, we're, we're on top of the moon at the moment. Okay, so how, how close are we to commercial space flight? Well, this was a big step forward today for Virgin Galactic and for commercial space flight, but the company says they still can't give a date on when people can actually pay tickets to take a seat in uh, what looks like an executive jet in a way. Uh, the company says it'll be reviewing the data from today's test that might take right through to early next year, and then they'll reevaluate uh, what the next step is. This has been a long time in the making, though. Uh, Richard Branson first announced his plans for commercial space flight back in 2004 went through some setbacks particularly 2014 and I want to show you some video this is where one of the test flights uh, unfortunately ended tragically the uh, co-pilot was killed uh, when uh, a, a mechanism on the tail uh, was actually uh, initiated early and that uh, ultimately ended up in uh, one death so this sort of really adding weight to today's success after the disaster uh, just four years ago now 600 people have bought tickets uh, to board Galactic, uh, Galactic spacecraft. The tickets, a quarter of a million dollars each, $250,000 a ticket, 600 people have confirmed. They are all waiting for that moment where uh, they can feel the kick of the rocket's ignition, see the curvature of Earth and the blackness of space, feel weightlessness for a moment, but there is no timeline in place just yet. And the space race, so to speak, is still on. It's not just Virgin Galactic uh, gunning for this uh, commercial piece of the pie. Of course, we also have Blue Origin planning to take space space uh, tourists into orbital flight and SpaceX's Elon Musk says he's hoping to take people uh, on a trip around the moon uh, someday soon. So we'll continue watching, but uh, this was a big pull ahead for uh, Virgin Galactic. All right, Johanna, thank you so much and good night.